Hey everybody, it's Lee here and I'm at Gibson Custom Shops HQ in Nashville. I am joined by Tom Murphy, some might say the father of sort of aging guitars. Are you um, blaming, you're blaming me <laughs> <laughs> And I, I really wanted to take this opportunity to talk to you about um, not just the aging that you've done on electric guitars, perhaps some of the stuff that we're talking about on um, the new Montana of course. acoustic guitars. Um, I love the subject of, of uh, aging or relicking or whatever people want to call it, distressing. It, mm -hmm. it, it's probably one of the most um, volcanic kind of topics yeah, oh yes. on, on YouTube. Um, it's all your fault. You started it largely. Yeah. And I think one of the things that's interesting as well was that resonated with, and, and maybe this is where we'll start with this, aging and distressing. Right in your mind, are two different things with two different purposes. Precisely. And I'm trying to... Explain that to, you know. I, I am trying to uh, express that to people in that aging does not make... Aging, if you're talking about belt buckle wear, does not make a guitar function any better. But if I can age elements of the guitar, especially the finish and the wood, then I feel like we you may get sonic benefits out of it. If, there's, if it doesn't improve the function of the guitar, then it's sort of frivolous. Uh, but people like all, all, all levels of age. We have four, the ultra light, light, heavy, and ultra heavy, because people have different tastes of what they like to look at or feel or be seen with. with. Yeah. On the acoustics, which we've just launched out of Montana, they use our proprietary finish and that's how I describe the stuff that's on the guitar. And it will check, which I feel relaxes the entire guitar. It's a box that vibrates, so it can vibrate freely. So I think that's the aging, is the finish that's on the guitar. Yeah. And I've been saying our finish is the aging, and then the wear and tear is the distressing. Yeah. It's sort of is the same thing, but it doesn't serve the same purpose. No, I, I agree. So the, so if we put the aesthetic to one side, uh, Tom's got some great pictures on his phone, that, nice analogy of just, you know, four different pairs of jeans going mm -hmm. from a, you know, a pair like I'm wearing now to a pair with massive holes in it and just going, that's just your, that's your, that's your style and your vibe, that's isn't it. it? It's like, mm -hmm. it just doesn't matter. But the, let's talk about the aging because everybody wants to try and achieve that extra one mm -hmm. or 2% sonic, you know, people might spend hundreds of pounds on pedals or oh, yeah. whatever they're gonna, to just to get that extra 1%. Your belief, and, and it's a shared belief of many guitar players, of which I'm one as well, mm -hmm. is that old guitars have a sound because of the, and part of that sound is in part the way that the finish has aged on that guitar. So can you- well, Hold this. I will. And th this will be like Spinal Tap, but mm -hmm. I'm going to say, you, you would hear the sustain. Just in your, hold it in your hand, yeah. and then strum the low E string and let okay. it ring. Does that feel old? Does it, well, it, I can feel the vibration yes. through my hand. It continues. Mm -hmm. I can still the, feel it. Because the uh, uh, guitar lacquers have been uh, uh, engineered for a long time to be durable and protective, and that's fine. Mm -hmm. But they can have sort of a dampening effect on a piece of wood. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, even though we will not claim specifically uh, the sonic benefits of, it, of the finish on our solid body electric guitars, which I could plug into a bunch of pedals and to an amp and go, does it sound old? Yeah, the pedal sounds old. But, uh, but I think when people feel it for themselves in their hands, mm -hmm. Uh, then it gives you that sort of warm feeling of, oh, this is a friendly, friendly uh, uh, instrument that's going to help me play. that 
history of um, because I think in the in the the golden era of guitar making, which m most people accept was that sort of fifties, mm -hmm. early sixties, yeah. guitar brands changed the way they built guitars and the way they finished guitars in a way to make them either A, quicker and easier to produce, mm -hmm. or, or B, actually more durable. Yeah. So, you know, during a time where the idea of um, the finish wearing through would have been seen as highly uh, undesired. You know, sure. like you, you, you wanted oh, your course. brand new Fender Strat or whatever to look brand new for as long as it possibly could, and that obviously drove changes. But when do you think people began to question the sonic sort of um, side effect, if you I, like, of changing those finishing well, processes. I didn't, I can't recall when I personally had, uh, I was skeptical about new guitars from the late 60s into the 70s, whether I was experienced enough or not. We just wondered why these companies would make the changes, like the bigger headstock would make the logo bigger. And I know that finished is, that's not, I didn't know the word lacquer, but I knew that the newer stuff had a really plasticky kind mm -hmm. of thick feel and mm -hmm. a look. And, and we just had this feeling that uh, uh, the engineering inside those companies at the time was not focused on the sound and the subtle uh, 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 historic designs. It was on making them durable and making them so that they won't get damaged and with virtually no regard for how it might affect the sound. Mm -hmm. The guitars were just dead sounding, uh, most all the companies. And of course, you know, I got, I got lucky in 1992 to be asked for some advice on a product and I worked at Gibson and I said, well, why don't we make some changes on the reissue Les Paul because it has no vintage features whatsoever and there were plenty of things we could do, even just for looks, right? It now has led, for, in my opinion, to the guitars we make today because there are so many features that we've tried to replicate that we're almost back to the beginning mm. and we sort of make old feeling guitars. Where's the, I suppose if, if you talk about the bits that seemingly seem to upset um, uh, and I'm, I think it probably is 75, 80% of the, of the guitar playing market seem to, to be uh, offended, for want of a better word, by the idea of a pre-aged kind of guitar. Uh -huh. Now, if, I wonder if you sort of dug into what is it that actually offends them? I mean, potentially tons of belt buckle wear, maybe more. But if you look at this idea, I think there would be a, a more unanimous feeling if it was just about trying to finish a guitar in a way that did enable the body to be mm -hmm. more resonant, right. but maybe didn't have the visual signs of it, well, is it possible to do that without the checking or does the that, checking that, come part and that parcel? Is what, and I don't have one here. That's what our ultra light right. category achieves because we don't put any cracks, right. dents, chips in the paint uh, because that's, part of the progression of the distressing yeah. that we offer. Uh, although uh, we have had requests for our finish on a guitar without checking, and I hate to say this, that's not real feasible. I was gonna, that, that I think is the nub of it, isn't it? It's yes. just... It's going to check. It's good because it's, it's so on the edge. So, I mean, again, perhaps explain even how checking occurs. You know. uh, well, in my unscientific explanation, <laughs> uh, uh, I lived in Colorado for quite a while. Mm -hmm. I left my Gold Top Les Paul in the van overnight because we'd gotten stuck in a blizzard after a gig. When I arrived at my apartment the next day, I got the guitar out, went to my apartment, opened the case, <laughs> The entire guitar exploded, which really bummed me out because mm. I didn't know I'd do that for a living someday. But anyway, uh, I saw the effect and I knew it was the cold that caused it. Mm. And uh, like I said, real simply, wood is a, is a living material. It has moisture content. It will move constantly. Uh, my J45, I sort of have to adjust the neck for summer mm. or for winter it, if it's in dry heat or whatever. Yeah. 
And so if you take a finish that is completely uh, cured and dry and brittle and you the, let the wood move slightly either yeah. direction, it's not gonna go with it. So that's how checking occurs. Yeah. A dry, hard, cured finish that will not move with the wood. So we're, we're sort of going, if you, you can't have one without the other. You know, if you want the finish to be that, that sense that it's an old vintage nitrocellulose, 30, 40 year old, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. you know, sunk in mm -hmm. finish. Uh, even if it left the factory with none or minimal checking, it's next to impossible to ensure that it will arrive at its destination like that. This is the first time yeah. I'm going to say this in, in public, public, <laughs> but I feel I used to take a new guitar with a new finish, modern finish, mm -hmm. and try to make it look old with fake scratches. Yeah. And all that. I feel now that essentially I, we can take a new guitar and put an old finish on it. And that's quite a... That's quite a different perspective, I think. On that's really and how I, and I, I think that's. I'm. I'm not. I know I've got into arguments with people on YouTube on many occasions about the whole aging relicing thing, and uh -huh. it's not. It's never ever been. Um, is it? Do, does it work? Doesn't it work? Does it claim to change the sound? Doesn't it claim to change? My argument has always been, who are you to tell me what I should like about how a guitar should look? I don't tell you that I don't like the color of guitar you like. You're so don't, right. don't tell me that I can't like a guitar. That, anyway, that's always been my yeah. argument. But I do kind of feel if people looked at the ultralight aging, mm -hmm. accepted that there probably are some, you know, albeit minor uh, steps towards making that guitar feel like it can just be a bit more resonant. Precisely. And that maybe there might be a bit of checking and maybe it's a bit contrived because it's, you know, it's, you know, but that's just what it is. I think if they kind of just accepted that, I, I can understand by the time we've got a greenie over there with like all the oh, wear and, you right. know, and that's about replicating right. something that has been properly, you know, lived in for many, many years. I get that, that there will always be some people who find that cool, yeah. the people with the big holes in their jeans. Yeah. And there'll always be some people that just go, it looks ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like, that's fine as well. Who cares? That's your, that's your choice. You well, know? projects that, that I've been involved with over the many years, so like 20 something years, and we re replicated so many artists, guitarists, n n you know, notoriously famous Les Pauls. Uh, it, it was, I was able to get it to, to mm. pass people's uh, uh, inspection over the years. Uh, people thought a lot of them was frivolous, but what I mean is I took a razor blade and made lines to look like checking I mean, how artificial is that, mm. right? Uh, but it still worked. I mean, I couldn't get them done fast enough. So that was my life for a long time. I, I did discover a new material and a new process to get a more convincing and authentic uh, uh, style or uh, pattern of checking. That's all real. That is really cracked. Yeah, because you're, you're, I think you're, Really, that that you know, if if lacquer cracks because the wood moves, mm -hmm. it's cracking from within, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's not. It's, yeah, it's whereas not with, with a, with a razor, you're top. you're cracking yeah, from the yeah. top, aren't you? Whereas this, right, it was it and, was all yeah. visual. And I guess that makes sense if you if you if you finish the guitar in a certain way so that it's ready for it, and then you put the guitar in a condition where you're just essentially rapidly changing the temperature, you're going to get some very natural yeah aging. Well, well that's the. I showed you earlier a picture of my gold top Les yeah. Paul, which was pristine, ultra light. I played one gig, and now I have four 
chips in the paint, yeah. which I wasn't even aware were happening. Now that would bum some people out, yeah. but in my case, no. And that, that I think is, you know, I remember talking to the, the, the um, you know, going through the sort of the, the Leo Fender sort of history of stuff. I think, you know, a lot of the changes that he made to the way guitars were finished were because people did get bummed out if they put marks oh, on yeah. them. So of course he'd, he'd make a finish that was incredibly hard wearing. And, but then I do feel, well, I, I do I? It, it, it feels to me like now people do want guitars that look worn in, but the argument that you hear is they want to do the, the wearing and, in themselves. And we feel like they can. It's yeah. just that we can't release guitars with our finish out w without pre-checking them because mm. that's going to be the nature of the finish. Let us control mm. that because we don't know what you'll do to it out there and it won't tolerate yeah. very much abuse or misuse. I uh, uh, have an acquaintance who owns a real 59 Sunburst Les Paul. I met him and saw the guitar a couple times and uh, we have a mutual friend who called and said, hey, said his name, he has a, a Murphy Lab uh, light aged at 59, and uh, he, he got a chip in the top of it behind the bridge, and will you look at it? I go, yes, I'll look at it. I probably can't do anything with it, but they came to my shop at mm -hmm. my house, and it was below the bridge down here, and I said, well, what happened? He goes, I, I don't know. I, don't, I just noticed it. I had it in the car. It was like really hot. I go, stop right there. Would you put, leave your 59 mm. in the car? With it's real, no. I go, well, you can't leave that in a car like that. Treat this like it's an old guitar. Yeah. Uh, as you play it, you're going to see things like that, just like on my golf club. That's what we want people to be aware of if they buy a Murphy Lab guitar. No matter what, it's going to show wear. Not because it's an inferior finish, because it's a finish engineered mm. to show wear for us or for the, for the player. Yeah. And it's just a, a reality. And if you don't, like it or you're afraid something will happen buy our vos finish mm -hmm. our gloss finish and uh, we have all that stuff you don't you don't have to buy a well, guitar from custom shop that's the other thing isn't it you don't you don't have to buy no <laughs> you know it's not like it's not like back in the days where henry put robot tuners on the guitars yeah, yeah. and, and you uh, had right. to buy them with it it's like you do have a choice you do you, have a you, choice you, um, we have just widened the spectrum yeah. of of our instruments and our product line and we know mm. that this is desirable to a lot of, of people yeah. and since the market's there if you don't like it get out of line because there's a guy right behind you who really <laughs> wants it and we know that because we have orders on the books yeah i just would like to think we have tastefully and with integrity offered mm. the the concept to people because we know they want it you know and so then they can uh, decide whether there were yeah. sonic uh benefits and a uh, feel which i believe there yeah. is but I, I i know i know for myself one of the things on um an aged guitar is i approach how i play it differently like if I have a brand new, you know, I mean, I, I, Paulie Smith make beautiful guitars, oh, yeah, and, he, yeah, and, yeah. and Paul doesn't want to do the relic <coughs> thing, and that's fine. No, and no. it's and that would be, I think, if I owned <coughs> particular, there's some of his guitars that he makes, I would be heartbroken if oh, I yes. put a, you know, like a, a, a mark or anything mm -hmm. like that. Absolutely heartbroken. Not to mention how much I'd probably devalue it doing that as well. Oh yeah, yeah. So I so you play it with kid gloves, you know, you 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 play it in a. A relic, you know, I can pick up a seven, eight thousand pound dollar, um, re you know, an expensive mm -hmm. Murphy Lab, and I want to get it, and I don't care. I'm just going to give it some yeah. like that. I want to play it how I feel the guitar wants to be played. And again, that might just be me, but I, I think that's something. It's it's almost like the the the, the aging just removes the fear of getting the first thing. Precisely, on it, you know. <laughs> I, I uh, when we introduced it to Japan. Uh, and then the, went back the next year and it really had caught on. And I got a question, how, how come they, they play so good and feel so good? And I wanna say it's, that's all on your mind because yeah. you're relaxed with it and you don't have to worry. You can lean <laughs> your Les Paul against your Fender amp on brake and not worry about, you know, you don't wanna break a headstock, but you don't wanna worry about every scratch. Yeah. So they're already on there. Yeah. And it does <laughs> take that where you don't have to have a towel over your belt buckle to play it because it's a really glossy, nice, uh, five star 
flame top, pristine. The first scratch. Yeah, that's a hot yeah, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. You've got a little box of, I want to, again, you, everybody talks about you and associates your name with oh this sort boy, of the yeah. process. And, and, and it's, you know, it, I, 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 it's great talking to you and, and I, I feel the passion. And I, and I like the fact as well that uh, I think you even said before we started rolling that if you were going to have a Murphy Lab guitar, you probably wouldn't have the one with all no, the big no, belt rack. No. It's like not your bag, but no, it's, no, it's not so my thing. I, I think it's, it's nice for people to hear that, because they'll sort of get that, it's, you know, you're not driving this idea no, that you've got to no, have it no. as smashed up as possible. No. Um, but you've got a, A, we've got some nice examples, but you've got this interesting little old ice cream box of, of um, <laughs> tools and stuff on here. I <laughs> know, oh, no, yeah, like a, and I, I'm, I the, can't pour them out here. I have before, in fact, uh, a Japan uh, delegation was here last week. And for me to bring this in and dump it on the table, the cameras came out immediately. <laughs> but I can say this, that I saw a restoration shop in New York many, many years ago, 30 mm -hmm. years ago. The guy had put a new, made a new drawer front for this piece, cabinet, and he made it look like this piece here, and then he drilled wormholes in it, and he had a ring of keys, and so he had to replicate the wear and tear mm -hmm. on that, that new piece. I thought, wow, he had a bunch of keys. Well, I have a bunch of keys. I've had this bunch of keys for 25 years, probably. Some of those were my old truck keys. But they have put a lot of <laughs> dents and guitars over the years. So now everyone in the lab has a, a, has a set of these. Exactly the same and the same weight. I, I didn't bring any here, but I have a box twice as big as this, full of keys. I bought it at the flea and market. And that's just, you, again, that, that's, so if you're trying to create some of the wear on yeah, the back here, you're just. because uh, we have a thing where when we do <laughs> this, we want multiple textures. I don't want you to just take these and bang on them. You can use it for drop, dropping and jams, you'll see. Or if we soften the finish with heat, we can get a more swirly pattern and we can pr even maybe use Scotch-Brite not not rub it, but use it and tap on it, and it'll add a texture. Maybe we'll blend some of the stuff because the last thing I want something to do is look fake and artificial. Yeah. Some of it does, and and all of it is. But <laughs> if we can get get it realistic, and if you flip it over, uh, I don't know if we have on this. It's not on this particular piece, but we have a, a place that's. Uh, on virtually every one right here, we call our, our rock star bling damage right there. Where, where, they, like where they wear their yeah. bracelets. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, actually, Slash was in not long ago, and I said, that's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> because it's it's typical. And so uh, that's on almost every heavy and ultra heavy. Well, what are some of the, I mean, yeah, what are they? <laughs> this is number one tool. Wow. That is a railroad spike that holds the track onto the tie and I had one at my, it was at my father's wood shop just laying there years ago. I thought, I can do something with that. And so I started using it, and then a friend who played guitar was at my shop who works on the railroad. What do you do with that? And I showed him. He said, I can get you a bunch of them. So he did, and this was in the, the batch That's he it. found me. And It's pretty heavy. Very specifically, the texture on the back, this gets really pretty in, in too deep, but the texture is s bumpy but smooth. Some of them have a more spiky mm -hmm. feel because they've rusted and deteriorated. That is perfect uh, on the back of the neck, for instance. We, I can tap this and it, it will literally, <laughs> it will break the finish. 
and I, we can do that in a pattern and we can remove and you'll have a textured look instead of a peeled off look. And I actually used it the first time on. I, I was replicating a Pearly Gates, Les Paul, and it had very specifically, there'll be places where it's splotchy, but worn through, but not all of it. And so that started with this. I do use the tip of it for a little jam. If I want a jam right there, there's, there's a jam. Uh, very carefully, pick where I will usually use this here, along with uh, some other tool. This is one of the most surreal conversations <laughs> I've ever So it's gone so far <laughs> that since everyone was borrowing this tool, yeah. that our engineer from Montana, Madison, who I'll tell you about, heard us talking about this, and he said, "Why we all have these, but this is number one. <laughs> he said, why don't you cast this? So we now have a replica. So you can buy a Tom Murphy official. Tom Murphy official. Railroad spikes. Yes. So <laughs> our it's a genius level. Our marketing. engineers it's just are, gone off another level here. <laughs> yes. I mean, who would have these ever are, thought these we would These are make... just a thousand dollars each as well. Just, yes. Uh... <laughs> and uh, but uh, this is. I won't tell you what guitar we're working on. It has a pretty deep, really smooth jam on the back radius. This was made to make that what, what, jam. Oh, so that's that's just been made to make. Yeah, yeah. I just had this threaded, so <laughs> when I hit it, I don't hit my thumb. Right. Because I was doing it every time I tried to make that jam. Uh, this. Uh, Have uh, you actually I, got belt buckles in there to uh, simulate this is the belt rash? This is the original belt buckle <laughs> from the belt rash from for hundreds and hundreds of guitars back in the uh, uh, '90s and 2000s, and. Uh, there it is. The cowboy and the cow and the horse finally fell out. Yes. I had them on a spatula using them, so I decided to put it away. It may end up on eBay. I'm not, no, I'm not sure. No, don't eBay this. This needs to be framed. And this just piece, put, you know, yes. This started 10 million YouTube <laughs> arguments. <laughs> Th this was made to measure where we would remove the binding on the headstock of the Peter Frampton uh, Phoenix guitar, mm -hmm. so we could remove it the same place on every, and until I got them to just leave the binding off. Right. Uh, but when we when we get a uh, a feature that we are looking at to replicate, we just figure out what tool's going to do that. So sometimes I look in here and go, uh, I I bet this will do that, and we have this is a replica of the door hinge pin off of my Chevrolet truck, which was laying around. And when you see a jam right here mm -hmm. on, I'll show you one on the guitar, it's made with this or the hinge pin from my, from there's, my Chevy truck. Because you've got to understand, there's no place you can go buy, well, Stuart McDonald. Uh, and maybe I could sell that at Stuart McDonald. Do, do, you, do you think there's, I hear it so many times, you know, people use the analogy for relics. Oh, it just looks like they tied it behind my car and just dragged it around the yeah, car. Yeah, right. It's probably the most common one. And there's, and I, I'm sitting here sort of thinking, well, that's not how it's done. But it's not, but that the way it is done is almost as ridiculous. You know, it's like, it's just, it it's, it's just, well, not ridiculous is the wrong word. It, you, it's a really, I, I suppose all furniture restorers, not restorers, oh, yeah, sorry, yeah. Um, people crashing. that are trying to make mm -hmm. furniture look older than it really is. It's a, it, it is a bizarre skill, you know, it, 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 of using all sorts of weird tools of mm -hmm. busted bits. But ultimately, the one thing I guarantee, because I've seen you know, local small luthiers try to do it. Sure. If you're not really good at it, you do make it's something that just looks shit. You know, like that actually oh, does. Oh, you know, but when you and your team do it, as ridiculous as the process might be, it does end up looking like a really authentically I, worn old guitar. I, I, I <laughs> work with and train and try to instill pride in the guys because we started with a small group that I mm. had to use as my crew. Mm. I had to, to meet production needs. Mm -hmm. And I told them, just bear with me. I'm not really smart, but I got this one thing I do and one way to show you. If you'll just do it that way, then there'll, there'll be a consistency and you'll start seeing uh, uh, your work looks just like my mm -hmm. work. And we have one of the newest members on the team in the lab who was a touch-up repairman. Mm -hmm. And 
when we did interviews, we hired him, and he had no background in old guitars and belt buckle wear and scratches. He did the opposite. He fixed those things. <laughs> but I worked very closely with him on all his pieces, and I inspect the guitars every morning. And uh, I, I started him on light aging. Mm -hmm. and, and as we progressed into the heavier stuff, it was almost like he made a, a 180. I could see when he was working, he was really focused. Mm. And I looked at the wear on the back and I went, oh, you're just showing off. He had discovered how he could achieve this authenticity in his work. He wanted it to look, mm -hmm. he wanted me to be happy and he wanted to be happy. And he takes so much pride in his work now. He almost wants to be the best guy back there. There's no weak link at all. We can't have that. Yeah. But as long as guys are, are looking forward, how can I make this better? Hey, Tom, check this out. That, that's what we all do back there. And as I say, it's not rocket surgery, but it's very specialized. You don't just take a railroad mm -hmm. spike, car keys, and a hammer and a heat gun and then hand it to somebody and walk away yeah. and expect to get this. There has to be some kind of uh, focus or reference of what, what you want to achieve. Because when they start banging on these things, you, you better have, mm -hmm. and, and actually one of our very best guys, the first guitar, and he had a background in vintage guitars. He did his first guitar, I don't know why I didn't supervise that. He brought it to me, I looked at it and went, how would that happen? <laughs> and it was about 80 or 90 big jams all over the top where he had just hit it mm. repeatedly. And he looked at me like, uh, I don't know. I go, see, you have to have a reason yeah. for doing that stuff. So he, I got with him and worked with him. His stuff's impeccable now because you can't be back there hoping you can do good work. Uh, so it's, it's a really cool relationship, me and the guys there. And I've said this before, everyone has worked in a different department in the company before, buffing, neck fit, body line. Well, they come and get them from time to time and borrow them. Well, that's okay, but we can't go out on the floor and get someone and bring them in there I and just... let them and give them car keys and, and, a, and a railroad spike. I, I want to talk about, I want to finish up talking about the acoustics. That's obviously the mm -hmm. newest Murphy Lab kind of thing. Um, but, but before we do that, just one last thing on the electrics. You obviously, or no, I say you obviously, I'm, I'm not going to assume that. Can I assume that you do get to meet loads of artists that are famous for having vintage Gibson instruments? Yes, several. What's their reason? You know, what, what do they think about what you're trying to do? Is it, are they just trying to um, get you to recreate guitars that they can take on tour with so that they're not taking the half a million dollar somewhat, one in? Or what, somewhat. What, somewhat. What, what, what is that there, typical uh, conversation? There, there is a money element <laughs> in terms of, of an agreement uh, on a project. Uh, but I think they, uh, and I don't really interview them for this, mm -hmm. uh, Matt Kaler for the most part, and our artist relations people and Matt's in product development, uh, they form a relationship and they see what the people are expecting. Uh, there's been a time when someone said, don't put the cigarette burn on it because mm -hmm. they're embarrassed about it. Uh, don't put the broken headstock because they're embarrassed about that. Uh, in, in terms of the, the way they are concerned about what we're going to present. Mm -hmm. But uh, for, for the most part, they're proud that uh, somebody would want a replica of, of their guitar. And, you know, we've done them all uh, from uh, early days of, uh, of Jimmy yeah. Page and D Dickie Betts and then both the Dwayne Allman Sunburst guitars and then... Bob Marley and, and Paul Kossoff and Peter Green and, and the list just goes on and on and on. Those guitars are iconic and it's cool to try to replicate them. Uh, you, you never really totally know how excited an artist is about seeing the yeah. replica of his guitar and, until they do and then they go, wow, that's really cool. And we want them to think that, like we're wor working on some really high profile projects mm -hmm. now today where the person can be critical and or really enth enthusiastic. Uh, but I will say that an artist we worked with very early on, I did, it was a gold top Les Paul, and I did two 
prototypes because the actual guitar was no longer gold. Right. And we did what would be a possible replica, a replication of that guitar when it was notorious on an album cover. And after many, many years on the road, uh, the damage it would suffer. And when we showed him the guitars on his tour bus, he held one up to his ear and he says, he likes to play them like that first. And he's, he said, this is that old wood, right? And I looked at our artist relations guy across. I'm thinking, uh-oh, where's this going? And he goes, what's all them scratches on there for? Well, that's supposed to look like what would have happened to the name of his guitar. Really? Why would somebody want that on there? He had no idea someone would want a guitar to look like his guitar. He thought it was all about what he had done to his guitar, yeah. which he had changed the color and everything, which we eventually did that too. But it was funny, like he had a completely different perspective on the whole concept. And because he wasn't thinking about how cool that guitar looked. It got all ugly looking. That's why he changed it. So, uh, you know, Willie Nelson is never going to fill that hole in the front of his guitar, ever. You know, that's, that's iconic, and that will be, in, obviously, in the museum. Uh, so, uh, I worked on a doctor's guitar one time that had an original old guitar that was very expensive, mm -hmm. and he bought a refinished version, and I replicated his, and it was that white finish, cracked up, and... Uh, he, he was happy. He, we, I did it through a dealer who was associated with the guy. And uh, shortly at, thereafter, I had a guitar show. The dealer said, hey, he wants to meet you. We go to his booth. He had him so side by side, which is original, which is Murphy, <laughs> which I, I didn't, I wish he wouldn't do that. But he was causing a controversy. But he told me personally, he goes, well, he goes to a jam every Tuesday. And everybody knew he couldn't take his other one to the jam. And he showed up with this one. And they go, well, what are you doing? And turns out he thought he was really cool because he was hip enough to get a replica made to take. And he said, now I got a $50,000 guitar at home in the closet that he can't use <laughs> because he uses this one. So it had some purpose and function. Uh, and uh, he, he wanted it to look like his old one and feel like it. So, mm -hmm. th I mean, that's what this is all, all about. Does this make this guitar better? I think it does in a little, little, little small way because I, I can feel it. Yeah. Uh, and especially the acoustics now. So let's, let's talk about the acoustics then. Uh, the, so, we'll, the, the, the internet will rage until, oh, yeah. until the internet is no more mm -hmm. about whether it's possible for an electric guitar to sound different because Precisely. of its finish and all the other bits. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fine. It's, you know, it's a fun argument. Let's, let's yeah, just yeah. keep it going. Um, but the acoustic guitar argument is done, right? It's 100% it, all you are hearing on an acoustic yes. guitar is the so is the Wood. wooden elements of the guitar and the strings. You know, they're, they're, there's not really, well, what else have you got? Bridge pins, nut, yeah, I suppose. Yeah, but yeah. you know, there's yeah, no, yeah. nobody's gonna go, it doesn't make a difference. The timber doesn't make a difference. And of course, if you apply um, a finish to the timber, you inevitably affect sure. how the timber uh, can um, resonate. So it seems an obvious thing to me to do the whole Murphy Lab thing to an acoustic guitar. But I love the fact that you've um, done it respectfully with the sort of really light aging. Very, so it's got light. nothing to do with, you know, belt buckle rash. No, no, no. But you're, you're, you're sort of relatively self-confessed, not like an acoustic nut. So no. how, did, how did that kind I of... I love acoustic guitars and yeah. I have old acoustic guitars. And yeah, they're magical in their sound. And you know, it's a box, it's vibrating. Mm -hmm. And what can I do to help that vibrate uh, sufficiently and uh, continually? It's to not restrict it with a mm -hmm. plasticized, thick, mm -hmm. uh, a dampening finish. Well, we know this finish is ends up, no matter how many coats, like regular production, it ends up thinner. The solvents mm -hmm. dissipate quicker. Uh, why not put it on an acoustic? Uh, 
it was talked about, but I wasn't, I wasn't instigating it. But one day, two showed up from Montana for me to paint and to Murphy Lab. Well, the result was pretty radical. It's like, you know what? These things sound awesome. Did you have anything to do with the, because uh, the aging process on those guitars is not just the finish, isn't it? I think the, 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 they're using additional drying techniques on the, on the woods as well. Oh yeah, all, all the tops are torrified, as people call it. That's uh, uh, thermally mm -hmm. modified, I mean, they're baked, and they bake the top, spruce tops to dry the, the sap or whatever you want to call it that's inside the cells. Mm -hmm. It comes from a, a, a like a fir tree, you know, mm -hmm. and you don't need sap in a fir tree. So it helps dry them. They call it hardening the cell walls. And you can hear it when you tap on it. It's mm -hmm. a dry piece of wood that now has no dampening from in, inside. Mm -hmm. And I think it's re really a substantial influence on the the sustain and overall tone. Then you, uh, I mean, and they're all, all the guitars pre-50, which would be the L00 from the 30s and the uh, J Banner J45 for, from the 40s and the Southern Jumbo, then they all have red spruce tops because that's what they would have had. Mm -hmm. And then the Sitka spruces on the J200 and the Hummingbird because they're 60s and, and uh, 50s guitars. So they try to make them period correct. The high glue on the pre-50s and yellow glue on the 50s, 60s guitars. And uh, you know, their neck profiles they've gathered from many, many guitars that they've that they've looked at, x-ray, scanned, whatever. Uh, so then you put our finish on there and all of those things, the, the high glue neck joint and so on, all of those things get to do their function totally freely uh, without being hampered. And so when I play them, I just hear the sound jump off and out of the guitars. It's, mm. it's really cool. I didn't completely expect that, but I was hoping that we could get some of that with our finish because I just feel the finish is there to protect the wood. You can't have it not have a finish on mm. it. But just like with that, it's not durable. It is not durable at all. And I, I think they will, if we offer an ultralight, which is no scratches or ding, mm -hmm. they would start showing wear pretty quick. So yeah. I guess I'm warning people, if you don't want to scratch the guitar, don't buy a Murphy Lab uh, acoustic. But so far, so good. That, you know, they're out in the world, and every one that I have played has it's just been marvelous. I was up there recently, and... I played two J two hundred, the best sounding guitars, maybe I ever heard. Well, I, I concur. We've, you know, you can go and watch the video that we did with Ben um, back in Andersons of, of some of these, and, and there is something magical about those guitars for sure. They, they really are. It, it, they're fun to play, and it sounds like the guitars want to be played. <laughs> it's like strum my string so I can vibrate. That's true. And uh, so yeah, it's really cool. So that that makes these fun and cool, but makes them really good because there's almost a, an immediate re, uh, recognizing of the, of the improved vibration and, and sustain. So hopefully acoustic players who not, weren't left out, but I'd say a real discriminating acoustic player does not want a real durable finish on his acoustic mm. guitar. Can you put a real light finish on that will let my guitar vibrate? For sure. So that's really what we're getting to do. Well, it has been a pleasure spending the last hour or so with you. Um, I shall look forward deeply to the comments section of this video. I'm sure we haven't convinced all of you, but maybe we've convinced one or two of you to go and at least check them out. But honestly, Tom, it's a pleasure uh, meeting up with you again. Um, I love the little, you know, the finishing touches you put on these guitars. I think they're absolutely super. And well, uh, thank, thank you guys. And uh, you've always been very supportive. Your YouTube is very <laughs> popular and we like to hear you say nice things about what we do. Oh, well, no problem at all. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in another video soon.